Hi there, my name is Dr. Hilary Booth and I'm a naturopathic doctor and welcome to my video blog. Recently I did another video about how to treat autoimmune conditions by targeting inflammation. If you haven't already watched that video, take a second now and go watch it. And then come on back because you're going to need that video for today's video. Today we're going to dive into why does autoimmunity happen in the first place. And to do that, first we need to refresh our memories that autoimmune disease is a broad term and it's used to describe any condition where the body attacks itself. Now genetics largely influence whether or not we have a predisposition to have autoimmune conditions, but it's not the whole story. It is important to note though that with genetics that you need a full family history with your naturopathic doctor or other healthcare provider in order to look into that aspect of treating autoimmune conditions. But the other part of the story is that your environmental factors can actually turn on and off your genes. So these environmental factors that can cause autoimmunity or trigger autoimmunity include things like toxins, drugs, and heavy metals. Today we're going to hone in on learning why heavy metal toxicity can trigger autoimmune disease, how we then go about testing for autoimmune, or for autoimmune induced by heavy metals, and then how of course we go about detoxifying the body and treating heavy metals as they're part of an autoimmune picture. So first let's ask the question, how does heavy metal exposure actually trigger autoimmune conditions? What happens in the body is we are exposed to a heavy metal. Now we can be exposed to a heavy metal like mercury, lead, cadmium, gold, silver, aluminum, and many others um, by lots of different routes. We can inhale it through vapors or through uh, chemical exhaust or fumes. We can eat it from contaminated food sources. Um, we can also touch it, whether it can get absorbed through our skin, and it can be in things like mercury dental amalgams, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But what happens when we're exposed to one of these heavy metals, our body creates a, an immune response. And we're going to call this immune response Soldier M. So your body uh, creates this, this macho Soldier M to go then and attack this heavy metal that's come into the body. Now what happens is Soldier M triggers a massive T cell response. Now for our purposes of our discussion today, we're going to call this T cell response sort of like calling in the search dogs in order to go around the body. Um, so these T cells, when they arrive at the scene, um, what they are is they're shown an example of the heavy metal that they're looking for. In our example today, this means that our search dogs are shown kind of like an old t-shirt of the culprit that they're going to be searching for. And so they can recognize um, that culprit as the search dogs go out. Now, what happens in the normal body, in a healthy body, is that the uh, T cells are then tested before they're sent out into the body. So our body tests them. Can the T cells tell the difference between uh, self and not self, including the heavy metal it's looking for? And if that T cell fails this test and can't tell the difference, the ones that recognize self by accident are actually killed, so that only the T cells that recognize other than what we call not self, including the heavy metal, can be released into the body to go search for those heavy metals. Now in our example, this means that the search dogs are tested to see whether or not they can tell the difference between the culprit they're looking for and innocent bystanders. And if they can't tell the difference, those dogs are held back. Now, in someone who's been exposed to heavy metals, this mechanism is broken. So what happens is the T cells that recognize self aren't killed, they're actually still sent out into the body. And as you can imagine, they start attacking their own bodies. Now, in our, in our um, example here, this means that those dogs who couldn't tell the difference between the perpetrator and innocent bystanders were sent out into the community and were um, going after innocent bystanders. And that doesn't sound so nice, but um, it's not so nice in our bodies either when this happens because it means that your body is attacking itself and this is the beginning or the onset of autoimmune disorders triggered by um, heavy metals. Now interestingly, research tells us that, um, that genetics actually make us predisposed to this process happening or prevent us from having this process happening in the body. So that's why not everybody who's exposed to heavy metals actually experiences autoimmune disease. Research also shows that there are a couple other ways that heavy metals can affect autoimmune conditions. First is that um, heavy metals, especially ones like cadmium and lead, trigger a huge cytokine response and cytokines cause massive amounts of inflammation. And you, since you've just watched our video about inflammation, you know all about that, so I'll let that one be. The other way is that 
um, heavy metals in the body affect our gut flora in a negative way. And since 70% of our immune system is in our gut and is related to the good bacteria that live there, if we alter that gut flora in a negative way, we can skew ourselves toward autoimmune disease as well. So now that we know how autoimmune disease is triggered from heavy metals in the body, let's look at what puts us at risk um, for being exposed to heavy metals. If you have autoimmune disease that is worsening progressively or that is poorly controlled even with your medical um, doctor's interventions or your naturopathic doctor's interventions, or if you have adult onset um, autoimmune conditions that's newly diagnosed, you may want to consider that heavy metal exposure is part of your symptom picture. Now, heavy metal exposure um, is often something that is overlooked, so it's important to realize um, who may have been exposed to it. So people who have been exposed to exhaust fumes, particularly fossil fuel combustion or industrial emissions, people who smoke or ex are exposed to secondhand smoke, people who have eaten contaminated cereals, fish or shellfish, people who drank contaminated water, and this can be from lead pipes in Toronto, we have a lot of that, or from contaminated groundwater sources. They can be from mercury dental amalgams. I said I was going to talk about that, so we'll talk about that now. Removal of dent mercury dental amalgams or dental fillings is actually sometimes more dangerous than keeping them in place. They can cause a spike in your exposure. So it's important to really talk with your dentist before making that decision to pull them out. In some circumstances, it's safe and good to do, and sometimes it's not always the best idea. And the last thing that can um, be overlooked a lot of times when looking at whether or not you're at risk for heavy metal exposure is having a sluggish detoxification pathway. And this can be because genetically, your liver isn't, doesn't have the right mechanisms and systems in place to actually detox you properly. And this can also be because your liver may be overburdened. Um, and this can be because of drinking alcohol or um, taking prescription drugs or other drugs or other different things that can overburden our livers. Now, if you do think that you have some heavy metal exposure or that your autoimmune picture may involve some heavy metals, we have to talk about how are heavy metals tested. There are three different ways, but not all are created equally. First, there is hair analysis. Now, hair analysis shows heavy metal exposure over the past three months. Um, it's great because it shows a more long-term picture, and it's great because it's the least invasive and it's relatively simple to do. And the test that I run um, looks at 45 different metals, both toxic and non-toxic, that are found in the hair and as they're excre excreted from the body in the hair. The second test you can do is a blood test, but this test is not as um, good for looking at your heavy metal burden. And the reason is, it's not the current circulating amount in the blood that's really the problem. It's what's stored in the tissues that shows our full body burden. So a blood test only shows that circulating blood and not the stored tissue amount of the toxic burden of your heavy metals. Uh, the third type of test that you can do is a urine test. And again, if you were to just look at your urine sample, that would just show your current um, amount that's kind of circulating, so not as effective. But what you can do is something called a provocation challenge, meaning that um, you're gonna take a baseline sample of your urine, and then you're gonna take a heavy metal chelator, something like DMSA. And that's gonna pull some of those toxins out of the tissues, um, some of that overall toxic burden, and then it's gonna be excreted in the kidneys and you're gonna take urine samples going forward from there. And you're gonna watch the amount that spikes in the system and then falls as it's excreted from the kidneys. Um, there's, it, this testing is great, but it's important to note that it's not completely scientifically validated and some people do argue against it. The other thing is that um, it can be dangerous. So DMSA and other heavy metal chelation agents pull that burden out of the tissues and into the circulating bloodstream. And once it's there, it can cause lots of problems. Um, and this toxic burden can really spike. So it's important that if you're gonna do this, you're doing it under the supervision of an experienced MD. And uh, also that MDs in Ontario right now are not legally allowed to prescribe heavy metal chelating agents like DMSA. So my favorite to do is the hair analysis because it is accurate and it's great because it's pretty non-invasive and simple to do. So once we've done our heavy metal testing, we find that we do have some high levels of exposure in certain types of metals. How is it treated? So depending on the type and severity of your heavy metal burden, if it's high and it's severe, you are probably going to be referred to an MD to do the heavy metal chelating agents that we spoke about earlier um, through some, some supervised medical um, Medical, super, medical supervision. Now, 
If your toxic burden is slightly lower, um, it's not in a dangerous toxic range, then you may decide to do natural treatment for um, detoxing those heavy metals from the body. And if you're going to do that, we need to target a few areas. First, we need to improve your liver detoxification pathways, and there's lots of great herbs and supplements that can do that for you. Things like curcumin, milk thistle, B vitamins, selenium, magnesium, and lots more. Second, you need to support the elimination. So we detox in the liver and then we need to eliminate it um, from the body. So we need to make sure we have good bile production, we have regular bowel movements, and we have proper kidney function. And again, there's lots of naturopathic protocols to work through that. And then thirdly, we need to use specific nutrients that are targeted at whichever heavy metal is high in your body. So different ones target different heavy metals. So things like ALA, NAC, spirulina, and chlorella are some of my favorite types of um, nutrients that can be used to bind and, and excrete um, those heavy metal toxic burdens from the body. And these need to be part of your treatment protocol. So what's the bottom line here? Bottom line, from my perspective, is that heavy metals are often a overlooked aspect of treating autoimmune disease. So for many people, working to detoxify the body from heavy metals and working to limit that exposure in the first place is a huge piece of the puzzle to help us to slow the disease process and autoimmune disease or even um, allow you to go into better remission. And this is because you're targeting that underlying cause of disease. You're targeting why did you have that initial autoimmune reaction in the first place. So if you do have any questions about this whole process, please feel free to contact me in the comment section below or by going to our website and filling out the contact page there. I'd also be happy to see you as a patient to go through this process together in a way that's targeted for you and your autoimmune condition. You can book an appointment with me at DrewWellness.com or by call calling our office at 416-214-9251. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I hope you have a great day. Take care.